Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be talking about GDevelop and what you see in front of you, this is a GDevelop example game and if you're a regular to GDevelop, you may notice something a little bit different than normal here. Uh, this is, uh, it's 3D, so that's, uh, that's definitely new. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, 3D capabilities now in GDevelop. That's definitely one of the big new things we're going to talk about today. It's because GDevelop 5.3 was just released. And I actually talked about 3D functionality uh, four or five months back when it was first added in. Uh, this is sort of a cum cumulative update of what's happened with GDevelop over the last little while. Now, if you've never seen GDevelop before, this is it. Now, I have to tell you something right away. Is It's 3D, but it it isn't really 3D tooling yet. So you've got 3D scripting and functionality in here. All of this stuff, uh, all of the logic here, by the way, what you see in front of you, this is the way you code in GDevelop. Basically, it's like super-powered spreadsheets. Uh, but uh, all of the 3D code works, but the editor, the editing environment, the game scenes, all of that stuff, not 3D as of yet. So what I'm going to do is head on over here. This is the launcher for GDevelop. If you've never heard of this one before, it is an easy-to-use, completely free game engine. There is an upgrade tier, so if you want you know, cloud integration, and that kind of stuff. Uh, there is a subscription you can pay for for that stuff, but otherwise you can use this completely free. Uh, it is an open source project as well. So come on up here. Let's go ahead and create our first game. You're going to notice there are an absolute ton of examples here. For example, we saw the 3D tile builder in action. We've got a bunch of new ones here for like... Uh, 3D implementation. So we got a car racing game and a lane running game going here as well. But I'm just going to open up the classic project example. So we'll go ahead. We'll create one of these. By the way, you can run this entirely in your browser if you wish as well. Uh, so that is a cool feature. On top of that, you can also run this uh, on mobile. So that is a rare thing. And the uh, visual scripting language actually works really well on mobile. I would actually argue that GDScript is probably one of the best, if not the best, on the go game engines out there. You can actually program without a keyboard or any other accessories on your device. And you can do it on an iPad or you can do it on an Android phone. It's actually pretty capable and cool stuff. So what you're seeing here, this is the level editing environment. So you place things in here. So for example, we've got this player controller. They can have behaviors attached to it. There are a number of predefined behaviors that make your life very easy. You can edit the object over here. The cool thing about GDevelop, and what I like about this tool for a beginner approach, is that it's got everything all in here. There's a number of assets built in there. There's a music editor in here. There is uh, an animation art editor. As you can see, variety of different animations here. You do have a bunch of predefined behaviors you can add as well. So you can see this guy is actually being pre-configured with a platform character animator. So you don't need to write the logic to do that stuff. Someone has already done it for you. So you've got a number of predefined behaviors. So you see if you're doing draggable object or top town movement or whatever, you literally just add it in. Ditto for pathfinding, mouse, mouse picking, uh, firing bullets, and so on. So a bunch of stuff that you would commonly need to do is already defined as behaviors. You can literally just add a behavior in and then set the properties up for it and you are good to go. Of course, you can also come in, uh, you can define variables for things. You do have a variety of different uh, special effects available here. So this one uh, is an, uh, uh, an outline. Here we go, for example, uh, we've got uh, a CRT TV effect, if you wish, or uh, ASCII character effect and so on. It's very simple to use in that regard. Uh, so yeah, let's get out of there. I do notice there is one thing about this setup that I find very confusing compared to every other game engine under the sun. Uh, it's very weird that the properties, this would be like the inspector panel in other environments, is over here. I would think by default it should be over here. And then your scene graph of everything here should be over, let's find the title here. Oh, I can't undock it. Oh, no, there it is. It should be over here. That is the way things work in my mind, but it's a very small thing. It's just out of the box. That's the way the vast majority of things work. Now, one thing that you're going to find that they have changed for this release, uh, and we'll get to the release notes in just a second, but this is actually a pretty big one for how things are organized. The world of tags are gone, and the much more intuitive uh, folders are now available. So we'll put this, it's either going to be temp or download. So let's go ahead and we'll create two folders. <laughs> so downloads. And that actually I created inside of the other one. As you will notice, though, uh, things are very easily dragged and dropped and moved around. So if we want to put all of our platformers, uh, so platform one, for example, we put that in temp. We put this guy in temp as well, and we put our player into downloads. I know those names don't make any sense at all, but you now have this new folder-based organization. It makes organizing your scenes so much more intuitive. Definitely a nice quality of life improvement in 5.3. In fact, this is honestly worth the price of admission, uh, admission alone, in my opinion. Although, again, it is completely free. So what we're going to do, we're going to head on over to the GDevelop website. If you are interested, it is available at gdevelop.io. 
So if you're a GDevelop regular, you're going to notice there is a massive facelift for the, the product. Also, I didn't realize they were working with such big companies, things like Amazon, Walmart, Coca-Cola, Google, and McDonald's. There's some, now some testimonials about people working with their product. It is just a much nicer, prettier experience. By the way, if you do want to get started with this, it is super, super simple. Basically, you can pick, go into one of the tutorials anywhere you want. But the neat thing here is you can actually run this completely in your browser. So here you can see I'm opening it up. This is in my browser that it is running. And you're gonna find this is the exact same experience we just saw locally. So you can download it locally, you can run it on mobile, and you can run through these guided tutorials directly in your browser, like so. So you can see here, exact same experience that you would get uh, anywhere else. So a very uh, small barrier of entry here. I didn't need to create an account or anything like that. Obviously, if I want to uh, save my work in the cloud, I'm going to have to do something to that effect. Uh, now we're going to go here into the GDevelop 5.3 release note. So again, this is pretty major release. So this is a cumulative release since 5.2. I think it's about the last six or seven months work. Uh, there is a, a, a video kind of runs you through uh, some of the highlight features there. If you want more, uh, check that one out after the fact. But of course, the big thing here is 3D. So 3D, uh, it was originally through a bunch of community extensions, but 3D is now natively supported in GDevelop. Uh, obviously, the tooling isn't there yet, but we do have some new features in place, including a new 3D particle emitter system uh, that you can use. Uh, so that is uh, pretty nice. So 3D lighting is also activated by default for every scene uh, with a new 3D object, but it won't affect 2D uh, performance at all. You now have Steamworks integration. So if you're working on a Steam title, and you want to have access to things like achievement, networking, matchmaking, user-generated content workshop, anti-cheat DRM of your choice, whatever else, you can work on it there. Uh, so you can actually see them implemented in the game Bullet Bunny. You want to go ahead and check out that demo. This game was written using GDevelop. And then, of course, this is the one that I featured earlier on. Uh, probably the nicest quality of life update in this one is the ability to use folders now. Uh, so the community wanted this. You can now group your objects into folders, allow you to organize both scenes and global objects as well as search by object folder. And I will admit, games would get really messy before without this. Uh, before they used a tag-based system and the tag system is gone. Folders are back and folders make so much more sense. Uh, we got a new syntax for variables. So a small change of big consequences. You can now write a variable name to use it. Uh, this works for global scene and object variables. Uh, you have auto saving for cloud projects. So if you're saving in the cloud, you don't need to manually save. It will automatically do it for you. Uh, and then we got a bunch of collaborative stuff here. So so if you've got, um, this is a membership thing, but if you have a startup or business membership, you can now share your projects with each other. Uh, so you can work together on a project without the need to use an external service. Uh, and also uh, in the future, you'll be able to do real-time uh, addition for projects with multiple users. In the meantime, you should ease a lot of work for teams working on the same project. Uh, so eventually you'll be able to do collaborative editing as well, but it's not there yet. Uh, on the topic, if you're using this in education, you basically now have a stalker mode so that teachers can look at what their kids are are doing. I don't think they want to call it stalker mode, but essentially that's what it is. Uh, we've got support for Unicorn in the editor, so you can have emojis, uh, Arabic, Cyrillic, uh, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and so on. This includes obviously things like function names, variable names, and so on. So if you are working in one of those languages, that's going to be a nice addition. Uh, and then there's lots of smaller exchanges in place, in-app um, purchase being updated to work with Google Play 5, various different bug fixes. There's some pre premium game templates available now. Simplified list of actions, conditions, and so on. So again, this guy is available for a variety of different platforms, including uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. And again, on iOS and Android, I did a video specifically about using GDevelop on mobile when this was announced. It works really, really well. Now, there aren't a lot of game engines on mobile. Uh, so on Android, you also have uh, Godot is available. And then um, there's Kodia on iOS. But I find, in all honesty, Gajo without a keyboard is infuriating. It's just not a good experience. So if you have a keyboard for your mobile device or if you're using it on a Chromebook or something like that, it's a great experience using Godot on mobile. But the thing is, GDevelop, with the way that it does its programming, so this... Uh, this structure over here, this visual hierarchy thing, it works very, very well on a touchscreen. So you're going to find if you are looking for a mobile first game engine, this way of coding, it just works very, very well on mobile devices. So uh, you can actually run this guy on iOS and Android, and it works very well. And then once again, if you want, you literally just boom, load it up in a browser, no account actually required, although I do appear to be logged in at this point in time. And you can uh, test things out that way as well. You're going to find here, you go down to build, you've got a just 
a huge number of templates available to get you up and going, teach you a number of different things. Again, earlier on, we also saw all those various different behaviors that are available. So you can do a lot with this game engine. And the cool thing is there's a lot of assets to get you up and going as well. So it makes it for a very beginner friendly game engine to check out as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Available at gdevelop.io. gdevelop 5.3 is now available. Have you ever used this game engine? If so, what did you think of it? Uh, are you interested in trying out the 3D functionality? Or are you gonna wait for the tooling to come along a little bit more? Would you be interested in a tutorial or more in-depth look at this engine? Let me know these things in the comments down below. I think I've asked that one a number of times. I've covered gdevelop a lot, but I don't think I've ever actually done a tutorial on it. So I'm interested to hear what you think of gdevelop. Have you checked it out? Are you going to check it out? If so, what did you think? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.